Three. Two. One. You, me. And that TV. Blown apart yet sticking together. The 1996 Oakfield F5 tornado in Wisconsin. I've said that wrong. I'm sorry. I can't really pronounce that word. That really actually annoys me. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, hello. Welcome to the show. Hope you guys, guys are doing absolutely beautiful today. That's what we're doing. We're going to be reacting to a video called Blown Apart Yet Sticking Together 1996 Oakfield Big Boy. Let's do it. But before we do get it on, I want to see some thumb love. Like a video, subscribe, and let's do this. If you're also looking at my headset, I'm wondering why there's a streak of blue on there. Um... Last night on stream over on Twitch, I had my hair blue. I forgot that was there. I'm not cleaning it. Oh, God. F5's the biggest one, right? F5 is like the, is like a big boy. 10 past 10 a.m. The story of the 1996 Oakfield F5. Tell me all about it. Here we go. <coughs> Mother Nature's a big, crazy bitch. Just put it. July 18th. You agree. 1996. Mm hmm. It's just another summer day in central Wisconsin. The air is thick with humidity, the ground below baking in the sun's rays. It's sunny with nearly no clouds impeding the bright turquoise sky above. Suddenly, dark, foreboding clouds rush in, ushering the land into an early night. Storms are on the horizon. From above, the clouds begin to whirl. Rain starts to fall as a funnel cloud can be seen descending from the heavens, like, what the reaching the ground fuck? like a long, spindly finger. Within seconds, the twister matures into a monster, its eyes aimed directly at the town of Oakfield, Wisconsin, and its 1,000 residents. Over the next 30 minutes, a small town will be changed forever. Hundreds of lives will be eternally altered, and history will be made. But first, how did this come to be? I don't know. Tell how me. How did an ordinary summer day mm -hmm. go from sunshine and blue skies to darkness and carnage? In the that water? What he just said there is the scariest thing about the whole situation, where you could be sitting there, like he just showed, blue sky, sun, not a cloud in sight. Next, you're getting sucked up into a tornado and flew halfway across, across the world. Hi. the hell? Is that even fair? To answer that question... We must go back to the morning of July 18th. Oh, here we go. That mm -hmm. morning, a low pressure system was slowly making its way through the upper Midwest. The region were high, and the moisture drawn north from the Gulf of Mexico was plentiful across Wisconsin, uh -huh. leading to high levels of humidity. Clouds were a rare sight, allowing for the surface below to quickly grow unstable. A strong capping inversion, which prevents storms from firing, was present across the state, in turn allowing for the long period of destabilization and the accumulation of plenty of potential energy for storms that was seen that day. Coinciding with this region of moist, unstable air was a pocket of strong wind shear supported of supercell development. It was a classic setup, and it looked like all the conditions were there for an classic imminent outbreak setup. of severe weather. Shit. With this in mind, the SBC elected to put much of Wisconsin, as well as several other neighboring states, into a moderate risk. Wisconsin! That severe storms were highly likely later that evening. Wisconsin! Accordingly, the Storm Prediction Center issued a tornado watch at 3.33 p.m. Central Daylight Time for most of Wisconsin. Local meteorologists and NWS employees quickly began disseminating this information throughout the forecasted Jesus. impact area. Uh -uh. As the cold front draped southward from the advancing low pressure system moved into Wisconsin, storms would begin to fire out in front of it as the cap began to break. <clears throat> Once storms broke through the cap, they exploded, within minutes morphing into formidable, violent supercells. One such storm quickly took root in Adams County and steadily began to move to the east-southeast, picking up steam as it did so. As this storm entered Green Lake County, it began to rotate, eventually producing an F1 tornado that would tear... Oh, what the hell is this? If that's the tornado, what is that? ...through rural areas near the town of Princeton. This was a small taste of what was to come. Oh, God. As the Green Lake County supercell would bad, begin to cycle, another supercell further east would begin to intensify. 
Shortly after crossing Lake Winnebago, this storm would produce an F2 tornado that would plow through the tiny community of Marytown, injuring one person and significantly damaging several homes. As Marytown was being impacted, the supercell that had previously produced the Green Lake County tornado was re-intensifying, and on the verge of producing another twister as it entered Fond du Lac County. A well-defined mesocyclone would be visible, as locals and storm chasers alike on the ground would look on and wonder at the gray, swirling mass above them. <laughs> as the storm approached Oakfield, at one what local point, would capture the developing At storm. what point do you start to worry about tornadoes? Like, if he's looking at this right now and thinking, you know what, that's about to be a tornado, when do you panic? Immediately? Or do you give it a minute and be like, you know what, I'll see how this turns out. Or you just go and get ahead of the storm, to say, and start... You know, taking shelter. What do you do? What is your go-to? Storm on home video, catching the moment the tornado touched down on tape. Because <coughs> if this is me, I'm out. I'm in the car. I'm away. Oh, here we go. I think I've got the whole thing in picture here. There goes. Oh my God! I can't believe it. If you can't see the tornado moving, right, that means it's coming towards you. I think that thing's coming towards them, man. I know it's moving that way, but like, I don't know. Is it? Look at the damage it's doing down here. Holy. Fuck. It's gonna hit Oakfield. Bro, that is the devil's dick. Excuse my French, that is the devil's dick. to rapidly intensify after touching down. After crossing US 151, the twister would impact a few structures along the Look at the fucking size of that. <laughs> Look at the size of that. I don't think, like, I, I can really visualize how, how crazy that would be to see in real life. Look, look at this van here, man. Uh -huh. But would remain largely over rural areas. In its crosshairs, though, was a small village of Oakfield. Thanks to new WSR 88D radar technology, the NWS was able to issue a tornado warning for the town over 10 minutes prior to the twister entering city limits. The hey, let's talk about that. 10 minutes for a big ass tornado. Is that enough? Surely it is, right? Or is it not? I don't know, because I don't know how fast these things move across the ground, so it kind of depends on how fast it's moving, right? Sirens Scarcely, sounded man. as soon as the warning was issued, but warning was unable to reach everyone in the small rural town. Brett Ryan was a kid at the time, oh, residing no. in Oakfield, going about his summer day just like any other boy would. He and his family were playing cards, their AC blasting at full power. They were unable to hear the sirens and were completely unaware of the approaching twister until their AC unit fell out of the window. Brett's dad rushed he and the other family members into the basement what? just before the tornado impacted their home. The family thankfully survived, though their home was significantly damaged during the twister's rampage. Incidents like these are great reminders that tornado sirens are not the most reliable source for receiving warning before a tornado strikes. Back in the day, I'm going to assume that there's you can get a tornado siren uh, notification to your phone or something now. Surely that's a thing, because if it's not, why the fuck not? If it's not, I'm patenting that right now. That is my idea. I'm bringing it to you, yes. Phone vibrates, tornado f f five miles out. Boom. You're safe. That's definitely a thing, isn't it? Anyway, what I was going to say is back in the day, what else was there? Was it just a siren and that's it? If you don't hear the siren, you're fucked kind of thing. Or like, surely there's there's electric. I see electric here, right? Why, wasn't, why wasn't, wasn't there like a tornado bell in the homes? It maybe gets sent a signal from the electric and then starts ringing it. Would that not have been a good idea? Or was that impossible? Surely it wasn't. Same way a school bell would ring. Right? <coughs> Sirens are specifically made to be heard outdoors. Excuse me, guys. And while you may be able to hear them in your own house when everything is quiet, they can easily be blocked out by our TV, washing machine, or even an AC unit. That's a, this is actually such a good example of showing how other things just drown the, the sorry night. I'm going to assume that a lot of people didn't hear them on a lot of times, considering these three things this guy's just shown us something that was probably in every house every day. No weather radios are often much more reliable and provide an easy way for people to receive notice when dangerous weather is in the area. Good God. Ryan House avoided Wait, what was that? Radios are often much more reliable. Washing machine. Yeah. Or even a radio. A C unit. 
Noel Weather radios are often much more reliable and provide an easy way for people to receive notice when dangerous weather is in the area. Okay. While the Ryan house avoided complete destruction, others in Oakfield weren't so lucky. Mere blocks away, houses would be leveled, demolished by the F4 winds packed within the tornado's narrow center. Images like this, a church reduced to its foundation, Jesus. despite the house next to it being practically untouched, were common sights. A testament to the tornado's drill bit like shape as it passed through town. <clears throat> Among the buildings erased by the Twister's winds was the Oakfield Canning Factory. The building was reduced to a mangled mess upon the tornado's passing. Cans from within the structure were scattered all around town. Residents of surrounding communities reported finding cans from the factory miles away. From that weeks on is end. wild. While the damage in Oakfield was certainly catastrophic, the tornado had strengthened yet again as it exited the small Wisconsin town. It's still after you, isn't it? Which F5 intensity just oh. east of the community. Here, National Weather Look Service that, damage man. surveyors would find four homes reduced to bare slabs. Fucking hell. Several cars were tossed and thrown considerable distances. The surveyors described them as being turned into airborne missiles. In this area, tall fields of corn nearing their full maturity were reduced to one-inch stubble. Scouring was also in the soil, and anything in the tornado's path was obliterated during this stage of its life. After crossing I-41, the tornado finally began to weaken. As it occluded northward, it would narrowly miss a campground, before Oof. finally roping <clears throat> out less than a mile away from the city of Eden. It was on the ground for over 13 miles, packing winds in excess of 265 miles per hour at its peak. Miraculously, no casualties were recorded, but roughly a dozen injuries were documented, no deaths? some of which required hospitalization. That's a W, like... Roughly 70 structures were destroyed, and over 130 were damaged. Look at that. The twister caused nearly $40 million in damages. Check Is that $40 million in 1996 money? What would that be today? Probably about fucking $3 billion? And over 125 miles to the southeast in Muskegon, Michigan, <clears throat> carried there by the strong upper atmospheric winds. Debris catapulted in the air was also found littering Lake Michigan's waters, a reminder to those on the coast of what transpired just a few miles further inland. The Oakfield Tornado is one of the only F5 tornadoes to ever hit a populated area without causing a fatality. Yeah, that's crazy. In the tornado's wake, hundreds of Oakfield residents were left homeless. Local high schools were converted into shelters for those left without a place to stay, and residents provided their neighbors with food, water, and supplies in their time of need. Despite the tragedy, Oakfield was united as ever. Uh huh. Within months, homes were beginning to be rebuilt. Today, the tornado's path is still evident to those who drive through the rural community. New construction lines the streets where once rebel and destruction laid. It's come a long way since the Twister, and today it stands as one of the best small towns in the region. Uh huh. The town's motto is inspired by the unity and resilience its residents exhibited Wait, after the Twister. When did the Twister movie come out? I'm pretty sure it was 96 too, wasn't it? it I know means... this has got absolutely nothing to do with the movie. I mean, it's, it's just. I don't know why, it's just the same year, but I know I know there was probably a lot of tornadoes in 1996, but this is probably maybe the biggest one, perhaps? Oakfield blown apart, yet sticking together. It is this inspiring tale of rebuilding and resiliency that has given the residents of Oakfield a chance to help other communities when they deal with similar disasters. In the wake of the 2013 Moore tornado, Oakfield residents were some of the first to donate money and supplies to the Twister's victims. Fucking hell, man. Helping them through a disaster, just as Oakfield had done itself over 15 years earlier. Jeez. The Oakfield tornado was the last F or EF5 Twister to ever strike Wisconsin. Bro, what was this? Is this all EF5s? What happened here, man? Holy! And the residents of Oakfield are very thankful for that. As we go forward, we can only <coughs> hope that disasters like what transpired on July 18th, 1996 can be avoided. How could they be but avoided when though? They do happen. Count on the residents of Oakfield to be there offering a helping hand. Have you guys seen Twisters 2? You know the thing in it where she throws the little things up into the tornado and they kill it? Is that a, is that a thing that could be used in real life or is that just Hollywood being Hollywood? Either way, ladies and gentlemen, I know I asked you guys to send me a lot of videos. You know, if you guys have ever, you know, recorded a tornado or like shit, not shit, but like stuff that's happened to you. Not that sounds weird. Um, just that, uh, yeah, stuff you recorded with your phone that shows tornado damage or other mother nature 
being a bitch. I'm pretty sure there was a way easier way to say this, but I couldn't do it. Either way, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you leave a like, you subscribe, and I will see you later.